Hey everyone, welcome back. My name's Andy Fellows. Uh, if you're new here, I make videos on destructive cults, damaging norms, and just generally bad ideas. Today, we're gonna to be revisiting someone that I made a video on before called Bentinho Massaro. So I'm not gonna go into his whole background and who he is and everything in this video. I'm gonna just be going through a, a video that he has released talking about the true self which we'll get into shortly but if you do want to hear a bit more about him and get a bit more context a bit more background on him then go ahead and check out the video that i did in phase one about him i'll put a link to that in the description and i'll stick a card above here as well so you can check that out after this video for now we're going to go through this video on the true self and we're going to find out what the true self is how to connect with the true self we're going to highlight some of the concerns that a person who's looking at this from a more skeptical point of view might have. As a person who is looking at this from a more skeptical point of view, I do have these concerns. So I'm going to be bringing those up as we go through, highlighting some of the, the issues that I see in this. I did used to believe a lot of this stuff uh, back in my cult spiritual days, um, post Teal Swan. Um, I got into Muji. Uh, Eckhart Tolle, Ram Dass, people like that. And yeah, they they talk about a lot of this kind of stuff. Uh, it's not it's not unique to Bentinho Massaro. He doesn't have a monopoly on the true self at all. He's not saying anything new here, really. The way he puts it across and the way that he builds it up is I don't I don't think that's even new, but it's concerning. And the, the issues that I have with his approach to this and what he says here are issues I have with the whole thing in general. So anyway, without further ado, let's get on with it. As I'm ripping off Lloyd's format here, basically, let's just go the whole hog and roll the first clip. <laughs> now, source has no form. So the mind race in a society focused on form every single day, focused on people, places, things, knowledge in the mind, concepts. That's all the grass that's been covering the ground. So you no longer see the ground, you just see the grass. You just see, I am the body, I am the mind. I don't like this relationship, I prefer that one. I don't like this food, I prefer that food. I wanna become this, I'm not there yet, etc., etc. That's the grass, that's the stuff that's been growing over your original naked State, the aim of self-realization or God-realization is to mow the lawn, is to see the ground of being as clearly as you can see your own hand in front of your face. To see that you are God as clearly as you can see your hand in front of your face. So there, initially, you've got his premise, the idea that you have a, uh, a, a true self, a fundamental essence that everything else is after. So the grass growing on the ground kind of thing. OK, right. That is that I feel like that is already making the assumption that what we are isn't our true self, what we are in our personalities, in our character, in the way that we are living is, it's making the assumption that none of that stuff is really our true self. I would want to know how that conclusion has been got to, um, how Bentinho has arrived there. Throughout the video as well, he's making these kinds of claims, he's making these bold assertions that he's just, he's just saying it as if it's true, but he's offering no, no, no form of evidence, no form of anything to back up that it's true. We just have to take his word for it and trust him and have this experience for ourselves by the sound of it. You have to go in, you have to trust what he's saying to the point that you're gonna have an experience here and we'll see this later on. And that, that experience is then labeled as God, as your true self. And this is something that you see with Muji as well. It's something that I really bought into way back when. And a lot of people do. It's set up as being a divine truth, but really it may be, nothing more than a clever little linguistic trick that, that shuts your brain down, that shuts your thinking down. And because you're not thinking about the things that are stressing you out anymore, because you're not focusing in on a lot of the stuff that's going on in your life that might be stressing you out, that might be freaking you out, that might be creating tension in your mind, in your body, whatever, because you're not focusing on that, you relax 
And then that relaxation, that peace is said to be evidence of your true self, of God, of whatever. So he's set up that there is a true self and now he's going to go through and he's going to tell you how to access that, how to get in touch with that. And then he's going to tell you that that is God. That's that's what happens here. And you'll see that. And I'm not, I don't think that I'm inflating that in any way. I don't think I'm straw, straw man in that in any way. And if you feel that I am, please feel free to let me know in the comments. But that's the kind of thing that I think we're seeing here when we're looking at this and I think you'll agree because it's plain as day. Something else that's happening here is that there's an illusion of authority that's being created. He's speaking very slowly so his viewers, his followers are hanging on for every word. They're sitting there and they're listening and there's these long gaps and I've cut out a lot of the long gaps. Um, I will link the uh, source video in the, in the description so that you can see it and see how long those gaps actually are. But those gaps will keep you hanging on for the next word. He says a short sentence and then you're sitting there waiting. And in that time, you're being lulled into a certain state which enables what he says to, to bypass critical filter a little bit better. And you do see that a lot with, with people like this. Um, they create such a, an atmosphere in the room that it's not, a re it's not really a conducive environment for thinking. And that's the intention. They don't want you to think. He says in this that you don't think, you know, that you shouldn't be thinking, basically. So that said, let's get on. Let's see the next one. Forget your human life for just a moment. Forget memory. If you had no memory, who would you be? Without memory, it becomes really hard to claim any kind of identity in any object that appears to consciousness, to God. God is consciousness. God is alive. God is intelligence. Awake. So hopefully you caught that there at the end in his little word jumble. He was basically saying that you are God, that everyone's God and that God is consciousness awake or something like that. In amongst all of that as well, he's telling people to give up their human life, to give up ownership, basically, um, of, of everything and to, re to, to reconnect with their true self, their true nature. And their true nature is God. Have we got a citation on whether the true nature is God or not? That remains to be seen. I, I wonder where he's got this from. Someone else has said it at some point, and so it must be true, I guess. Or he's had a feeling because he's had an experience and now he thinks it's true. One thing that I often say in conversations about this, and I always, I always find myself coming back to it, is that the human sensory experience, the human, your human senses are not reliable data gathering instruments. I think Neil deGrasse Tyson said something along those lines as well. I think I'm paraphrasing him in saying this. I don't think that your, your five senses are reliable enough to determine whether or not you have experienced God or not. I'm not saying you haven't. I'm just saying I don't think that the human experience, the human senses are reliable enough. If we are trying to determine that something exists beyond a, the quote unquote physical in terms of ghosts, in terms of any form of supernatural, in terms of the existence of a God, we need to be able to devise experiments that go beyond our human fallibility because we are prone to error. There's a reason there's a thing called human error, right? We are prone to error. Uh, so I really don't feel like sitting down, having a bit of a breath, having having uh, a bit of a meditation and then experiencing some kind of peace and being like, oh, I don't think that that is a reliable determiner of whether there is a God or not. And I don't think that you can say with any certainty that what you have experienced in that state is God. I just, I just don't. It's just not reliable enough. We make mistakes all the time. There's so, like, have you ever walked down the stairs and thought that the stair was closer than it was and tripped and fallen? Have you ever tried to reach for something and knocked it over instead? These are these are this this is this is the fallibility of the human organism as incredible as it is as fantastic as we are as humans in terms of evolution in terms of the fact that we exist at all 
we are pretty shit at some things. And and when it comes to things that we can't necessarily perceive with our human senses, our capacity to determine truth breaks down pretty quickly. And so I, I, I'm not, again, I'm not sitting here saying there is no God, you haven't experienced God in doing this. But what I am saying is that I don't think that you can know for certain that that is what you have experienced. Because reasonably, there are a number of explanations that are not dependent on the existence of a God or dependent on you having experienced said God. That I can I can think of a few off the top of my head. The most obvious being that that I, I kind of went into earlier. That that you're just relaxed and someone comes along and says, That's God, by the way, that's your true self, by the way, and you go, well, yeah, okay, because you're not really thinking and you're relaxed. And I think that the 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 weight of that argument against it being God is encapsulated within the very fact that so many of these people that teach this, so many of these people that talk about this, that proclaim this to be the case, always say that is God, that is the true self. If it was God, if it was your true self, you would be in that state every single time or a majority of cases without someone saying that, you would arrive at that conclusion yourself. You would be in that state and it would be undeniable that it's God. It would be undeniable that it was your true self. You would go, this is me. This is the real me. This is God, blah, 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 right? Or at least that's what I think. I think that it would become pretty fucking clear to most people that that was God, that that was what was happening there. Um, I, I don't think that it would be necessary to drive that home so much to teach people that that is what that is. I think it would be abundantly clear. There are obviously going to be people who are living in a certain way, thinking in a certain way, believe in certain things already that will go through that experience and they will interpret it as that thing, as God, as blah, blah, blah. And even that, for me, doesn't stand up to scrutiny because that, if if anything, that highlights how, how problematic the assertion that that is God is. Because how can you know that that's God? And how can you be sure that that's God? And if you already believe in a God and then you go through an experience like that, why? Rather than trying to maintain that, simply for a few seconds at a time, say two to five seconds, you radically and abruptly, just throughout your daily life, but do it right now, you radically and abruptly and totally commit to dropping any and all thoughts. Just complete full stop. Full stop. Just two to five seconds. Just commit to it and notice what remains. Notice what's looking at it. Notice this quality of clarity, of lucidity, of consciousness, of alertness, of awakeness, of I am, of I exist. It's a subtle feeling at first. Stop all thoughts. Don't think. Just have an empty mind, right? Now, something like that I could see not being too much of an issue if you're choosing it if you're deliberately sitting down and you're engaging in an empty mind meditation practice of your own choosing in an environment that is safe that you're not surrounded by unknowns in which you're not surrounded by someone who is has has an obvious messiah complex and who you don't know the intentions of really other than that he's thinks he's got some answers and wants to share them, you know. And then add to that that he's basically saying do this throughout your life all the time. So instead of it being a practice where you set some time aside and your brain knows when I sit in that chair, when I do this with my hands, when I put my feet flat on the ground, when I take some deep breaths, that's the moment to go into an empty mind state and it's safe to do so and you're relaxed. And and please don't overlook the value of creating a routine that makes your brain... Uh, uh, get used to certain things, you know. I, I had a habit of of using the computer in bed before going to bed. And what that did was it told my brain, when you're in bed, you need to be awake and alert. So it really messed up my sleep. The moment I stopped doing that and I started using my computer elsewhere, you know, after, after a couple of days or so, my brain started to get used to it again. The bed meant sleep and the sofa or the desk meant computer meant awake, right? So please don't overlook the value of, Tell it of, 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 of showing your brain 
certain habits, certain rituals and what it's supposed to do in a given situation. If you're sitting down, if I was sitting there on the sofa, right, and I was going to do some meditation and I created a practice out of that, my brain is going to get used to being on the sofa, sitting there and relaxing and meditating. That actually may not affect my life too negatively. The effects of meditation will pervade into my day after that. They will affect me after that because my brain is going to be more relaxed. That's a great thing. That's positive, right? But teaching your brain to go into such a state throughout your life, being triggered by all sorts of things that you're not in control of, being triggered by things that you haven't arranged and set up, which are safe, which are in an environment where you're not open or, or vulnerable to being taken advantage of, where you're not around people who might seek to take advantage of you, that gets really, really concerning. That gets really iffy really quickly. And and we'll see throughout this video as well, and, and he's just started to do it there really. Bentinho is encouraging people to put themselves in effectively a meditative state with no thoughts throughout their day, constantly. And, and what that does is it shuts down your critical faculties. It's a thought stopping technique. And if you're familiar with the bite model, you will know that that is one of the points on the bite model. And the bite model is a model we use, for anyone who's not familiar with it, the bite model is a model that we use to determine what's a cult and what's not a cult. Hitting one point on the bite model doesn't mean that that thing is a cult, um, but hitting one point on the bite model does mean that that thing is concerning. And as far as I'm aware, Bentinho Masaru's thing has hit a number of points on the bite model at this point. But that's something that I would encourage everybody to research for themselves and to look into for themselves if they're concerned with it, or to at least familiarise themselves with the bite model if they aren't already. I'll put a link to that in the description below. If you've been on my channel for a while, you know what the bite model is, and I'm sure you've read it a hundred times, but yeah. So you radically give away all thoughts, all concepts, all ownership, all beliefs, just for a moment, be as naked as you can possibly be with the sense of I exist. Just purely the sense I exist. Just the sense. Not the words. They're just the entrance point. They're the door they open. But the actual experience before any words, pure awareness of I exist or I am. Awareness of being. Awareness of existing. Just that. This is exactly what I mean when I say New Age is blowing things out of proportion and making a big deal out of nothing. The awareness that you exist is not something that you have to deliberately go through and, and, and put your finger on. We're all aware that we exist. Oh, but that's an intellectual awareness that we exist. What you have to do is you have to go past that and you have to get a real feeling of it. Okay, right, so let's say we do. Let's say that we just empty all our thoughts out of our head and we sit down and we get aware that we exist. What then? What happens then? We just we just sit there and that's it. But then there but that's but that's oh okay. So then we start to explain it. And then we start to say that is God, that is your true self. And at that point you end up in the palm of someone else's hand who's telling you how to interpret your experience. At that point it's troubling. Um, but again, again, like I said before, there may not be anything wrong with emptying out your mind and having a moment of quiet where you relax and you recognize that you exist. If that's even like, that's uh, first of all, that's probably not an empty mind. If you're sitting there realizing you exist, you, you're now thinking about the fact that you exist. And, and I really, really have an issue with the insistence that there is a difference between thinking that I exist and the sense that I exist because what is the sense that you exist? How does that work? How, how can we interpret that? What does that feel like? How can we recognize that that's happening? Well, you just know. Well, that knowing is thinking, isn't it? And I, and I, I, <laughs> I have to challenge that, that new age notion of, well, an innate knowing, a, a spiritual knowing. What is that? What is that thing that you're saying exists? Show me that it exists. Show me what it is. It's just, it's just words that sound true, that sound profound, that sound important, but that that but they're not. Let's be honest, they're not. They typically are just used by someone who wants to look like they know something to convince other people that they know something and to get everyone into a cult-like tizzy 
so that they can take advantage of them, so that they can be surrounded by people going ah, all the time, you know. It's as if the mind begins to turn inward, back onto itself. Instead of focusing on the world, it becomes aware of itself as the self, as the subject, as that witnessing presence. Once you find that feeling, you can practice. You can practice it a little bit right now, but we won't have enough time to practice it for long periods of time. But as you go home, you can practice more of this. But for now, find the subtle feeling, even if only a few seconds you maintain it. Just a couple seconds of awareness noticing itself. Awareness saying to itself, I am aware that I am aware. I am that I am. So this point here is really where he hammers that home, I think. He's not, again, he's not really saying anything new here. This has been said before, and it's been said before pretty much by him, I think, in this, in this video already. This idea that when the mind is turned inwards, when it looks back on itself, it disappears. I think that's Muji's phrasing on the same thing. The mind is not something that's ever really defined here, and if it is, the goalposts move a lot. Same with consciousness in the New Age thing. Um, I, I would I would <laughs> I would want more of a definition on those things here, if I'm honest. But as you practice, it deepens. The rabbit hole deepens. And the kingdom of heaven will open up to you. Not to Jesus, not to me, not to Buddha, not to your priests. To you. The kingdom of heaven will open its gates to you. Direct contact. Contact. No more slavery. No more seeking outside when you are God, Christ's sake. Focus on I am. So if anybody thought that I was being a bit overzealous when I said he had a messiah complex, did you notice that he listed like Jesus, said so your priests, which was a weird way to phrase it, your priests, not our priests, because he's not among us, he's not one of us. Um, he listed himself next to Jesus. Did anyone else catch that? And the kingdom of heaven will open up to you. Not to Jesus, not to me, not to Buddha, not to your priests. This is quite a normal thing. Um, Teal does this as well, compares herself to all sorts of people. I, I remember her comparing herself to Rembrandt recently, and I don't know if you've seen her artwork, and I don't like to shit on a, on a fellow creative, whether they're a cult leader or not, but it's not Rembrandt. And so this, you know, the, the habit of comparing themselves or associating themselves with huge like cultural figures or people who would who have genuinely done some pretty impressive stuff like Rembrandt it's I don't think it's accidental it's either deliberate on the part of these people or it is just a symptom of the size of their ego which is ironic considering Bentinho Massaro is teaching us how to get rid of our ego here but or to, to transcend it or whatever. But the beginning stages of this is simply the subject, you. When you say I, you mean the subject. You may not know this, but you do. The subject of life, right? The subject of your life is you. And everything that you observe comes and goes. But you are the subject to those items. You've always been around. This is exactly why when I'm talking about the New Age stuff and I'm talking about truth in New Age, I'm often, I, I often find myself saying like, it's, it's wordplay, that they're, they're using words in a specific way to create the illusion of, of, of something that's profound. But really that's not, it's not profound. It's not profound at all. And it so often comes in such a jumble. And we're going to see that again. He does that again um, in, in a minute as well in, in, in another one of these clips. There's one aspect of you that's always been around with your life. Everything that has a form has come and gone. But you, when you say me, that me, that innermost sense of I, of me, that's your access point. That's your gateway. And start wherever on the gradient of love light you find yourself feeling the me sense. Me sense, love light gradient. I mean, what are we getting into here? What is happening here? 
this whole idea that you you have been around you the I the me has been around throughout everything that's happened and stuff I think that we're probably encroaching on psychology's territory here um, and and that is another again like I, this this video has basically just become my gripes with new age but one of the things that another one of the things that bothers me so much about the new age um, and and I think religion in general this one probably applies to as well is that it consistently puts itself into other fields as an authority. It oversteps its its mark quite a lot. If you want to sit there and you want to talk about how God is in all of us, fine. If you want to sit there and talk about how we are all God, fine. But the moment you get into the I and what the I is and what the me is, you start to step outside of spirituality and into the exploration of what psychology has 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 looked at and you start to try to explain things with with schemas that just don't hold up with with notions that just don't uh withstand the test of critical analysis or scrutiny um and again all of these definitions are really flimsy as well so if you ask if i sit and ask bentinho what the the love light spectrum is whatever the love like gradient is he's gonna he's gonna give me some fluffy words that leave me going away going hmm and then he'll say something like meditate on it or whatever and the, the words are just a vehicle the words don't matter it's they're pointing you somewhere that's a real um common scapegoat as well with this kind of thing again muji does the same kind of thing forget about the words forget about the the concepts and the intellectual that's all mind just just focus on this. Just get yourself into a state where you're not thinking because then you won't realise how much nonsense I'm sitting here spewing as if it's truth. <laughs> For some people, it may just be intellectual at this point. It's quite okay. Take it deeper. Over time, it will deepen. For some people, they may start to quite instantly feel a wave of bliss and joy and expense and like the world starts to sort of fade out a little bit. And there's a love and a light that starts to take over and become brighter and brighter. And some may at some point, who knows, may even be now, have the realization that this is all there is. There only is love, light, awareness. The world is actually an illusion. You've never been anything but awareness, love, light, eternal, infinite, forever and ever and ever, timelessly free. <laughs> I love that little... <laughs> just was that it's just it's just like bleh, word vomiting like random ra random vaguely related words there at the end you've never been anything but awareness love light eternal infinite forever and ever and ever timelessly free you've never been anything but awareness love light eternal consciousness infinite awareness consciousness infinite awareness eternal <laughs> It's like, what? What are you saying? You're just saying words. Before he was just saying words, there was a bit where he was effectively saying what that is, which is what I said about. Um, and, and there's a bit more of that as well. He's, he's effectively just saying, yeah, like the world is an illusion that this awareness is all there is. So he's planting that idea in people's heads before they've experienced it. So they're going to experience whatever this relaxation is and then they're going to interpret that relaxation as if it is awareness. And then they're going to go, wow, the world really is an illusion. You're so wise, Bentinho. Tell me all about everything. Let me, let me bask in your glory, old chosen one. And you can do this gradually, depending on how comfortable you are with sort of the free fall into relaxation. But the point is to give away your world because it creates the ego which veils the truth. It creates a separate sense of subject rather than the wholeness of the self. So give away as much of your life as you can, mentally, right? I'm not saying you should quit your job right now and all that stuff. I'm just saying during those exercise moments, you give away all ownership, all tension, all attachment to any of that as much as deeply as you can. And you relax into that letting go. I wonder if Bentinho is practicing what he preaches here. Um, this does, it does seem like one of those situations where like you hear someone like Osho just talking about just let go of everything. 
And then and then he's like driving around in his Rolls Royces and stuff. Like I wonder if Bentinho is doing the same thing. Like you know, give up your world, right? Of course, you could understand that he would he would say, well, I don't mean your actual world. I don't mean the physical stuff. The physical stuff doesn't matter. Don't worry about the physical stuff. Don't look at the physical stuff. Let's just leave the physical stuff out of this, okay? Um, my lovely apartment and all my wonderful clothes and all the things that I enjoy. And, and instead, look at your ideas. See, if you have a problem with anything physical, then you need to deal with your ideas because your ideas are the thing right? Your ideas are the problem. Deal with your ideas. Get rid of your ideas. Let go of the intellect. Let go of thinking. Move past it. Be okay with everything. It's kind of where this is going, right? And again, hope I'm not strawmanning that too much, but that's effectively what I'm getting from this. And what I'm seeing here that's happening is that he's selling a state which is, is a vulnerable state, a state where people can be taken advantage of, and he's selling that on the advantage of relaxation um, and the promise of some kind of truth. Um, and this isn't new. This Again, this is not new. This is a tried and tested cult leader formula. It happens all the time. Again, not saying he's a cult leader here necessarily. Um, you can make your own mind up about that. Have a look at the last video that I made about him. Again, link to that in the description. Um, look at some of his stuff for yourself. It's very, very woo. It's nothing new. And it makes me need a poo. No. <laughs> it's not anything remarkable, really. A lot of this stuff isn't, um, even though it acts, it, even though it's sold as if it is something massive and, and incredible. Let's gain some trust in the unknown, in the free fall of what remains, the space that remains, when you stop thinking about your life just for that period of time. It's called meditation. Look it up and Google it. Here's a little joke there about how it's called meditation. Look it up. Google it. <laughs> Actually, it's one kind of meditation. There are a number of different kinds of meditation. And if you look at what meditation is, it can go in a lot of different directions. The kind of meditation he's describing there is one of many. Um, empty mind meditation is one of many kinds of meditation. And um, again, I do not, and, and I'm no expert on any of this, but I'm not going to sit here and say that meditation is wrong, um, is bad, is inherently harmful. It's not right for some people. There will be some people who just don't enjoy it, don't get anything from it, who, it, who for whom it actually makes things harder in life. Those people are around, they do exist. Um, but I would say that I don't think, like I said before, it's it's not something that you want to make part of every single moment because that shuts down your capacity to question things, to deal with things in a rational way. It, it trains your brain to basically overlook things and to look past what you're dealing with. And that makes you vulnerable to all kinds of, of, of things. Of course, none of this that, that Bentinho is saying is coming with that warning. Obviously, because he's selling it as an ultimate truth, the the, the capacity, the, the, the uh, experience of knowing yourself, of recognizing your true self and recognizing God. Nonetheless, it, th that risk is present and it's still a thought stopping technique. It still ticks that point on the bite model. If you are a seeker, then seek for this. If you are not a seeker, then seek for this also, because whatever else you're holding on to is just a placeholder for this in the end anyway. You're just wasting time, really. This is to know the creator within, and it will unfold. It does not remain an intellectual statement of awareness, watching awareness. Those are just the words. It becomes a lived, radiating, illuminating, vibrant, alive, lucid, conscious, heightened experience. You start to raise your frequency, elevate your consciousness, and you start to begin to feel and understand and directly know the oneness of God that is your birthright, that is your nature, that you cannot ever escape no matter how hard you think. This is the be all and end all. This is the only way, my way or the highway. Black and white thinking there, selling his map of reality as the only true map of reality effectively even though it's obviously he's not the only one selling this. And I wonder if he would be open to accepting that the other people that are basically saying this 
are also offering truth. Um, I do wonder whether that would be the case. I know that he is an avid reader. I know that he does recommend that his followers read other things, which is a good thing. It's a very good thing. Um, not only because it, it rules out one point on the bike model, but also because the more variety of information people are getting, um, the more they're going to be using their brain in different ways and and building up their critical faculties a little bit, as long as he's not just recommending stuff that just reinforces what he's saying. <laughs> and I imagine that's probably what he's doing. But still, yeah, it's a good thing that he is encouraging people to look at other sources of information. Still, he's selling this as the be all and end all. So ultimately, there's, there, there is a point where everything else that he's saying, every other book he's recommending, everything else that he's suggesting people look at falls by the wayside because, well, hey, this is the be all and end all. This is the truth. If you're seeking, then look at this. If you're not seeking, you should be looking at this very black and white um, and very uh, absolutist, very totalistic, I think you'll agree. And he is making an assertion there that the that the creator is within, that there is a God and that the God exists within. Again, offering no, no proof of that, not even a rational, uh, reasonable argument for the existence of a God, just a bold assertion that there is one. And then obviously uh, in that clip, you've also got uh, a load of just words. He, again, he's just saying words. He's just talking. Um, uh, and, and again, it's supposed to sound profound because they're quite, you know, they're quite mighty words, aren't they? Awareness and, and consciousness and God and all this kind of stuff. It It speaks to a level beyond... The material beyond the human uh, personal uh, beyond the uh, the more intimate experiences that we have as humans so it's gonna it, you know it holds a weight I guess among all of these kinds of words which are really buzzwords are the chief new age buzzwords frequency and consciousness you keep using that word but I don't think it means what you think it means Bentinho <laughs> if you got that reference stick a comment below and tell me that you got it without actually naming the thing so that people don't cheat and don't google it because that's ruining the game if you've got the reference, stick a related quote or something below. Probably not the best Easter egg, that one. I'd, I'd imagine a lot of people get that reference, but hey, you're one of the cool ones if you do. <laughs> one thing that I do find really interesting about the last thing that Bentinho says in this clip is that you can't escape this true thing, no matter how hard you think. So what's the point in all of this? What is the point in all of this stuff? If, if you can't escape it, if it's always there, why bother? Like, what's, what's the value of realising it? Relaxation. Okay, so if relaxation is the, way, the, the value of realising it, then why aren't we just selling it as relaxation? Well, the, re the, the real reason to do it is to, to because you recognise your true self. What's the value of recognising your true self? What's the point? What, do we, what, what is the utility of this? What's the value of this? What does this do for us? How does this help us? How does it make life better, easier, anything? What is the real value? I know there's people out there who I just want to know. I just want to know what the truth is. I want to know who I am. And that is so vague a question that any charlatan can get up in there and just sell you anything. So if that is your motivation for doing this, for looking into these things, please find a better question. Get a more specific question to be answered. I want to know who I am, what the truth of me is. I want to know my true self. All of those things are so vague. How will you know if you have found those things? How will you recognize that? And if the answer to that is, I'll just know, you're setting yourself up to be taken advantage of. So please get a better question, get a more specific question. I'm speaking from experience here. I'm speaking as someone who was exactly there. You need a better question. Uh, you need something more specific. Um, and if people can't answer that question, move on. Because honestly, people like this don't want to answer specific questions. They want to redirect you towards thought stopping techniques, towards other things that they've made, books, videos. They want to keep you in the, the, the search, in the quest for answers in the quest for happiness in the quest for freedom from suffering all those kinds of things and they will say something like this 
and they will tout it as the be all and end all, but it is hollow as. Listen to what he's saying. It's hollow as. What is he saying? What does this do? Okay, it brings you peace. Okay, right. If peace is what you're looking for, fine. But please do not experience peace and then say that is your true self. How do you know? Where is the real connection between relaxation, peace, peace of mind, whatever it is that this person is calling, whatever synonym they're using for that, and God and true self? Where's the connection? And if nobody told you that that was what that was, how would you have arrived at that conclusion without any ideas? If he's saying get rid of your ideas, how do you arrive at that without them? How do you arrive at this is God, this is your true self, following really what he's saying there, I think, really what he's teaching there? Please think critically. Please be sceptical. Ask good questions. Ask incisive questions that get to the heart of the matter. Please don't be easy to please when you're sitting in front of someone like this, like Bentinho Massaro, who literally will say anything to get you to stop thinking and meditate. And I will leave it there. Thanks everybody for watching. Please remember to hit like on the video if you did enjoy the video. And if you want to see more videos from me, more videos like this, then please hit the subscribe button and hit the little bell so you'll get notified more or less every time that I upload. If you want to help support the channel, the best way to do that is through Patreon. And you'll see at the end of the video all the wonderful patrons that already support this channel. Their names are going to come up on the new end card that I've created, the phase three end card, everybody. My wonderful patrons and you, if you you decide to become a patron are part of making a podcast happen the podcast is going to happen when i hit 15 patrons i'm about 13 i think at the time of recording this i haven't checked today but we're at 13 patrons now so that's two patrons away as soon as i hit 15 patrons the wheels are going to start turning on that podcast the podcast we're going to be talking about cults from a more personal point of view saying some of the things i can't necessarily say on youtube without running the risk of getting demonetized however i do want to be clear that if something needs to be said on the channel even if it gets me demonetized i am gonna say it this is not me putting the important information behind payment i want to be really clear about that but if you want extra stuff then you can get access to that you can get that through the podcast i will be joined by a co-host as well so you're going to get to hear another voice on this and i'm really really excited to get that going so once we hit 15 patrons we're going to make it happen so please consider becoming a patron at the five dollar supporter tier level to get access to that when it happens. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks again to my wonderful patrons and I will see you in the next one. You've never been anything but awareness, love, light, eternal, infinite, forever and ever and ever timelessly free.